I would say it's it's like regular business law, but with cooler clients, you know. This was um, you know, my first gold record. I always remember. You always remember your first, you know. Hi, I'm Kurt Dahl, and I'm an entertainment lawyer based in Saskatoon. Hi, I'm Kurt Dahl, and I'm the drummer in One Bad Son. Finished law school. Um, didn't become a lawyer like everyone else did from my class. I had all these student loans and most people like want to go and become a lawyer and start paying those, paying those back, right? Or just making good money. I said, nope, I'm gonna be called to a different bar. So One Bad Sun formed again, 2004. We had our first breakthrough, our first hit was in 2012. So eight years in, we were an overnight success, right? And it took us the long road to get to success. But I mean, that's why I think we appreciate it so much. We don't take it for granted, right? So, and then you fast forward a few years, you know, we're touring arenas, opening for like Def Leppard or the Rolling Stones. So 2012, the law career is starting to take off and then so is the band at the same time. Like before that, no one cared about either. Around that time, they really both started to take off and I thought, oh, geez, well, this is not, what am I gonna do now, right? I had to bring my laptop on the road. So I had, like literally, we're cruising down the highway, driving to the next gig. I'm in the back of the bus with the laptop, negotiating contracts or on my phone, doing deals. I, wanna ditch this place like right now. I read so many biographies of my idols growing up, right? All my rock and roll idols. And the common thread between them all was that they all got screwed over by someone in a suit. So I thought if I could be the person in the suit that helps musicians and saves them from the pitfalls of the music biz that most people are fairly familiar with, right? That'd be a decent career to have. There's lots of sharks out there, right? In the music biz. And part of that is because people's dreams are at, at stake, right? So when you're sort of dangling the carrot of your, your dreams could come true if you sign this contract, it really changes things. And, a lot of the contracts that I see in the music biz would never fly in the regular business world, right? But because it's the music biz, it's the industry of dreams, people will sign anything. I think that is one of the real positives of, of having both is that no one in the country has that sort of background that I do in terms of just really having the long-term career, you know, being in a tour band and and having lived that whole, that world in the trenches, not being an up and coming band, right? All that experience really does inform my, my, the way I approach the law. In a rage, in a rage. I mean, it's hard enough to make a, a living in the music biz as it is. So if I'm able to sort of give them that, that power to make the most of a contract and actually go from earning like this much from the contract to this much and actually having a good living, um, to me, that's like, that's a real gift. 2008, 2009 is when the whole uh, downloading, the file sharing phenomenon really hit the industry. And at the time it was like the sky was falling in the music biz, everyone was panicking, but I realized there was a real sea change was happening in the business. And so I knew I wanted to combine my love of law and music. And so I wrote a masters of law thesis on the future of the music biz and how will musicians make a living in the digital era. 